Hi, this is Larry Hatch, and welcome to Hatch's Encyclopedia of Beers, where you will find more than 4,000 detailed, fair, and often humorous reviews by true experts. Our panel of experts has at least 20 years in the beer tasting or producing business, or have at least a thousand published reviews of a thousand different labels. So we're not dealing with pooled ignorance like a lot of websites. So we take this really seriously and have been doing it since 1993. Many of us enjoyed beer since, well, the 60s. Our website is based on a menu-based system. You just click on the sub-style and you'll get a full PDF page of all of our reviews. And this is all free. No ads, no nothing. You can download the PDFs free, so it's like having your own encyclopedia. And it's available exclusively at brew-base.com. And we use our own unique system called Hatch's Classification of Beers, where we have all the beers described and broken down to 165 substyles. And these are all laid out in documents if you want to read about it. And uh, hope you give us a shot. Thank you. Hey, this is Larry Hatch again. Welcome to our first review. By the way, all the beers we're going to be reviewing, at least initially, have scored perfect 5.0 ratings with our panel. We have a system of one to five bottles, and this all of these get five bottles, perfection. And hopefully this will give you some guidelines on what to try and what to avoid. Uh, we spend thousands of dollars a year on testing beer. We get no free beer, so we do it objectively as possible. And hopefully it'll save all of us a bunch of money by weeding out the good stuff from the great stuff, from the bad stuff. Our first uh, winner is from The Brewery. It's their bakery series of Imperial flavored stouts, and it's the cherry pie version. There's two other versions, one called Coconut Macaroons and one called Banana Bread. Uh, these other versions we gave, well, we gave a 4.5 to the Banana Bread and a 4.0 to the Coconut Macaroons. That was a little funky. Uh, but the Cherry Pie was an absolute hit and score with us. So now I'm going to read our full review, and I put some notes on the screen. Uh, the label says, now serving like a bakery. This 10.2 percenter is aged in bourbon barrels with the additions of cherry, cinnamon, hints of brown sugar, actual brown sugar, eh, who knows, and natural vanilla flavor. Uh, besides the banana bread bakery reviews, there's also the coconut macaroon version, which we didn't like as much. This one is very new in late January 2020, and uh, it doesn't yet appear on their website, so it's pretty new at this point. Uh, the pour is a super opaque, ultra blackish brown, under medium tan head of diverse textures, soon rocky, partly rocky. Um, there's measurable bubbles on the side of the glass at 7 to 8 millimeters wide, respectively. That's a little unusual. They're huge. And they lasted over a minute. Uh, the first sip is kind of curious. Uh, I described it as odd and adventurous. It's a very tart, sweet mix, like a syrupy, good cherry pie, in fact. We've had a lot of cherry-infused or cherry-flavored or cherry-drenched beers, but this one emulates the modern cherry pie with perfection. Uh, another one of our panelists said, This is absolutely brilliant. Not sure what to call it, but wonderfully infused flavor of sweet cherry malt is stunning. Far more harmonious and delightful than a cherry Coke. Cherry malt, cherry malt, cherry malt. That's the thing. Cherry and malt. It really does it well. Sweet and tart. Not sure uh, that that agreeable duo forms and fuses and mingles, but they got it right. It's 100% spot on, as our British friends would say. And it's one of the best cherry stouts ever. Maybe the best. It's not too complicated, and it's not ruined by too much oak or bourbon or other uh, interloping notes. The, the wood aging is just right. It's complicated, yet it's direct and agreeable. It's simple, but not simplistic. It is cherry malt, cubed, 
and the cinnamon and vanilla and the super sweet malts give it great support. How do they do this? I don't know. Others have tried, and this is the paramount pinnacle and absolute peak of the cherry stouts. Our second perfect beer with a 5.0 score is from Trogues. It's the Mad Elf Ale brewed with cherries and honey. Uh, years ago, there was a Mad Elf that was uh, pretty good, but this is the, the modern cherry and honey version. A little more expensive, a little more potent. Uh, comes from Hershey, Pennsylvania, where a lot of sweet things come from. Uh, it's an 11 percenter with 15 IBU, and it's made with Old World Saws and Haltertau hops. Haltertau hops, I always get that wrong. Uh, the yeast is called Spicy Belgian. Uh, the malt bill is chocolate, Munich, and Pilsner. Again, Pilsner in a sweet flavored ale. Mm, a little different. The pour is suitably festive in a rich ruby red with some orange tones. Uh, the head is kind of a weird yellow creamy color with some pink tints. I'll let you know there's probably cherries in it. It's large, foamy, lasting well. Uh, the first sip is quite potent for flavors and the ABV is brilliantly hidden. It doesn't taste like an 11 percent right away. You get a nice multi cherry flavor and that's from the get-go and it's very refined some hints of cinnamon and clove and allspice, peppercorns and cocoa. Uh, it's a really nice, really nice cherry, sweet, spicy mix. All these latter ones are very much in the background, uh, the clove and allspice, for example. Uh, but they give it merit. They give it a little bit of a boost, a synergy, if you will. It's slightly sweet at times, and the honey probably did most of that. It's a fairly unique thing, and it's very well executed. Uh, you admire it and love it at once. And Some brews, you admire the recipe and what they're talking about, but the results leave you wanting. Here we get both respect and love. They got it right, and it's executed perfectly, perfectly. For me, it's the best new unfamiliar Christmas beer that I've had um, in 2019. And by the way, this is March 2020. There's still a lot of Christmas beers out there, so it took us a while to find the best ones. And that's why I'm reviewing it at this point. Um, our panelists, one of our panelists said, Simply remarkable. The cherry and spice and chocolate are so well interwoven and made sympatric, sympatric that it delights the tongue and the brain alike. And another said, true cherry in a sweet, not tart version for once. Why do cherry ales always have to be so sour? Everything comes together and works for them. I could hardly find a better winter or holiday beer anywhere else. Well said. A must try. Trogues Mad Elf, the honey and cherry version. Our third perfect beer is the Omegang. Hop State, one word, IPA, in their Farmhouse series. We got a perfect 5.0 rating from our panel. And any of our 5.0 beers can be voted on for what we call our Award of Merit. These are the top 1% of all beers, in our opinion. Uh, we probably only give um, perfect score to the top 1% to 3%, maybe 4% at the most. But the Award of Merit is a very high is our highest honor we can give stuff that's going to be a classic or a future classic and really knocked our socks off it has to have a wow factor like holy hell this is amazing from the get-go made in cooperstown cooperstown new york where heaven met earth and stayed a while oh cooperstown reminds me of my childhood Grew up in upstate New York with dreams of Babe Ruth and Daniel Boone and Hawkeye, Pathfinder, Nettie Bumpo too. And some of you know, uh, Cooperstown was named for James Fenimore Cooper's father. And he's the author of the um, books that had Hawkeye and Pathfinder and Nettie Bumpo in it. Last the Mohicans. Slightly based on Daniel Boone, a little based on Davy Crockett. And, of course, the Cooperstown Baseball Hall of Fame with Babe Ruth and more. 
Uh, oh my gang is as close to Belgium in the beer world as New York would get. Uh, they're famous for their Belgian ales. So them doing a IPA, a little on a perfect one, kind of amazed us. We weren't expecting something quite that good. Uh, Hop State, we think, is probably a pun on upstate New York, where they're located. And um, they make a freshly hop pale ale, but this Hop State IPA is just whoo, off the charts. Um, this is the stronger version of their IPA. And it's made with 100% New York State raised Cascade Chinook, Michigan Copper, and Triple Pearl hops. Uh, New York State used to produce about 80% of the country's hops. Of course, now that's mostly out in Oregon and Idaho and Washington State. But uh, the industry's coming back, and it's coming to other states like Virginia, North Carolina, and the East. So they, they used um, local hops. That's unusual. New York State Grown Cascade. Wow, that's weird. Uh, they used a London Ale yeast. So, in that respect, it's a, a nod to the traditional IPA. And their malt bill is uh, Caramel Stream and Two Row uh, from the 1886 Malt House at Fulton, New York. Um, and I said, like I said, 80% uh, of the nation's hops used to come from New York, uh, but that was way back in the late 1880s. Uh, so uh, it's good to know the industry's coming back. Prohibition and the discovery of um, the better northwestern climates uh, kind of ended the, the New York domination. And uh, like I say, it's just coming back. Uh, this Hop State IPA is only 7.4%, with but it has a whopping 45 IBU. Uh, the pour is a lightly cloudy golden yellow under a pale cream head, fine textures, medium in height, lasting a bit, and soon rocky. The nose is very rich in hops, they're quite mellow, slightly sweet. The first sip is very intoxicating, showing a well rounded, diversely matched hop tea of the finest order. It's delicious and semi sweet from the get go. It really is a velvety, probably dry hopped tea-type IPA. Tea-type means it's well, like like a like a mellow tea. It's not going to bash you over the head. It's it's soothing, calming, and it's brewed like a tea. It has a tea-like taste to it. It's only slightly bitter uh, under those honey notes a time or two, and by the end of the can, it's it's not really a traditional IPA. And again, because it's got Cascade and Chinook and Michigan hops, it's really an American IPA, technically. And you'd, you'd hope that a, a firm like this with a stellar premium quality would, would do something this rare and sophisticated. But again, we didn't expect it. That's not their wheelhouse. Uh, the Belgian stuff is. But they have. They've done it. And our panelists were struck. They were stunned how perfect it was and we voted on an award of merit immediately and it was unanimous. Uh, one of our panelists wrote devastating to any other American IPA in years, captivating, smooth as silk, pleasantly and warmly sweet with every hop note being well tuned like a Porsche GT2 RS thriving on a track. And by the way that's their Porsche's best car at the moment. Another said, this is what hops are meant to be. Awesomely flavorable, complex, tea smooth, and effortlessly, effortlessly in harmony. Just the right nip of bitterness, but a liquid herbal candy of the finest order. Hooray. I'll say well done, Omegang. And in a style where they seldom venture. And it's now their domain. And others are needing to match it. Uh, as an American IPA, this is one of our new benchmarks. We have several, but boy, this is the latest one. Uh, it's a good thing for somebody who hates IPAs, because this will not abuse them in the least. Should not offend them. Uh, this is their salvation 
For I be a hitters, this is their salvation, and coming to the vine moment, converting the IPA haters to loving IPA, they just get the right ones. And this, my friends, is the right one.